and we're going to use a statistical applet uh, from, that I found online and the links on the website to look at the concepts of statistical power and um, type 2 and type 1 error and so on. So I have an HO, a null hypothesis that the mean is equal to 75. I have a known population standard deviation of 10 and a sample size of 15. Well, on the top, this is HO. This is the sampling distribution if HO is true. It has a mean of 75. And at some point, with an alpha of 0.05, we will reject HO. Even though it's true, we will reject HO 5% of the time. So in the upper part here, the unshaded part is the chance that we will make the right decision and the yellow or orange, whatever color that is, uh, that's the chance of a type 1 error or alpha. It's 0.05. So if we reject HO when it's true, we will have made, or we have the potential to make a 5 an error 5% of the time and be correct 95% of the time. Well, we're making the decision at that same point there, even when HA is true. So on the bottom here, we have not the alternative mu greater than 75. It says alt mu is equal to 80. Might be better to call that the true or real population mean. It's not just an alternative to HO. It is what really is there, and we're saying that it really is 80. So if mu is 80, what's the chance that we would have made the correct decision? So now we have a distribution where the mean is 80, and we have the same cutoff you know, reject HO is to the right of this line here. So what's this probably over here? That would be the statistical power. And it turns out that that computes to be about 0.615 here. Um, you could do the calculations on your own. I have another video where I do a little bit of that kind of calculation. But it's more important to look at conceptually that we're at the same space here. We're computing the probability greater than whatever this point here is. It looks like it's around... Oh, maybe 78 and a half or something like that. Uh, but it's on the same on both curves. It's a type 1 error here, but if we get above it on the true hypothesis, that's statistical power. Of course, the unshaded error, error area below here is that is uh, beta or the chance of a type 2 error un under with this sample size and this standard deviation and this alpha and so on. So the other thing, really the main thing I wanted to show you on on this it would be the impact of changing the sample size. It's true that if you change the standard deviation, things will change, but you don't have control over that. So we're going to change the things that we uh, can control. You could change, by the way, alpha, but let's just say we want a 0.05. And what I really want to know now is what sample size can I use with alpha 05 to give me the power that I want. So I'm going to go up to 25 here and see what happens. Got to update this. You see now the statistical power is at 0.8, uh, and that's because when we increase the sample size, although it didn't show it uh, completely accurately here, what what happens really is both of those curves got narrower, and so how about if we move up to 35? Now the statistical power is going to jump up again now to 0.9. So really the point of this is that uh, all else equal, changing the sample size uh, will allow you to achieve higher levels. If you increase it, it will allow you to achieve, achieve higher levels of uh, power. And this should be done to the extent that you can prior to collecting any data so that you know you're, that you really are collecting a sample size that's large enough to find an effect that it really is uh, uh, present in reality. And you don't really want to do that. You don't want to have over 100% power. You could make your sample size so large that anything will come become statistically significant. But you can see here, 35 would be sufficient given everything else that we know about the problem. And there are formulas and things you can use, but again, it's the idea that's that's important.